Okay. Now, one of the things you um, spoke about was that um, patients tend to, over time, drugs become less effective. Um, would a patacitamid um, move kind of the front of the line in that kind of order of, of treatment, or is it just is it based on the individual patient and maybe his or her history? Well, one point uh, he, here is that the, uh, as an oral medication, small molecule, as opposed to being a large uh, protein that's injected or uh, infused, we don't have the problem of what we call immunogenicity. With some of the biologic agents, you can have the problem of uh, antibodies being created against the protein that's the medication that is the protein. And they can, the, these antibodies can uh, diminish or neutralize the uh, effectiveness of the, uh, of the medication when they bind to the, the therapeutic protein. So this doesn't happen with an oral medication. So we don't have the issue of immunogenicity arising. And so there is at least that um, uh, point that uh, allows the drug to have more persistent, potentially more persistent uh, effectiveness. The, um, in terms of moving to the front of the line, although I think that uh, if all, all other things being equal, uh, uh, including insurance formularies, the, the drug could certainly be used as a first line agent. Uh, either before, even before uh, methotrexate, but certainly after methotrexate. However, uh, the dictates of insurance formularies tend to steer clinicians in certain directions where they have certain drugs that are more favor favorably approved by the uh, formulary than others, mainly for cost reasons. And so I think that it, uh, it, it will be a very good and welcome addition to the uh, armamentarium that we have to choose from. Uh, and it, it's certainly one that I would favor um, uh, early on in the treatment ladder, but some of this is gonna be determined by, of, of course, the insurance dictates. Okay, now you mentioned before tofacitinib, um, which I believe December 2019 was approved for ulcerative colitis. Is there a relationship between, say, rheumatoid arthritis and some of the IBD family of, of diseases? So there's actually more of a relationship between uh, uh, inflammatory bowel disease and the sp spondyloarthritis family, that is psoriatic arthritis and uh, axial spondyloarthritis, than there is rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, there, there is genetic uh, 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 clustering or relationship and so when you look at any given cohort of patients with IBD, you'll see uh, uh, the presence of spondyloarthritis uh, type uh, uh, rheumatologic manifestations and vice versa. When we um, uh, look at large cohorts of patients with psoriatic arthritis or uh, axial spondyloarthritis, we find a fair number of patients uh, either themselves having IBD or a uh, family member. Uh, that may have IBD. So uh, yes, you're you're absolutely right. There can be a relationship. And I guess some of the um, IL-6 treatments are currently being tested for COVID-19 to see if they could be effective in that. Are these, are the, is the upadacitinib? That's correct. Um, are they also being tested for um, maybe effectiveness against COVID-19? I'm aware of studies with baricitinib, okay. another JAK inhibitor, and atofacitinib being conducted. I'm not aware of any uh, COVID-19 trials with UPA yet. Okay, so the idea is it likely would not be that effective against the virus. I have no idea. I, until we see, the, the, what we're learning is that the uh, uh, results with uh, the JAK inhibitors are very, fairly similar to each other. And so if we were to uh, see effectiveness arising from a trial with Berry or TOFA, then I would, uh, then one might be able to extrapolate that one could see uh, effectiveness with a drug like UPA or Filgotinib. Is it important um, 
because you kind of hear probably more so early on in the in the pandemic process but you hear the fear that if we find something that works we might not have enough stockpiled so is it important to find like a family that works that way you have treatment options and you don't have to kind of uh remove the reserve of 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 one specific drug that that's a good point and it, it certainly we uh, saw, have seen some of that with uh, the drug hydroxychloroquine, which hasn't yet uh, been proven to be effective in the treatment of COVID, but uh, for various reasons has been popularized uh, with that hypothesis. And, and so some of our lupus patients have had a little bit of a difficulty in uh, uh, accessing their, their monthly supplies of hydroxychloroquine. Uh, but I, I I have a feeling that uh, we won't run into that as an issue. Um, and, but the point you make is a good one, that if, if uh, one of a family or class of, of drugs um, like the JAK inhibitors is proven to be useful, then they're, they're, there's a bro enough of them now becoming available that um, I, I would hope that we wouldn't run out of them for treatment of our, our standard rheumatologic patients.